the new He-Man, that's fine because we know we have a solid fan base that already likes He-Man from 20 years ago and are currently buying these products. So it's just one of those differences in times and like I, I feel like marketing that allows He-Man to exist right now. Also the fact that, you know, Netflix and uh, with 3D printing and toys being where they're at, they're just in the best place they could be. You know oh, yeah, I mean? definitely. With the 3D printing yeah, technology oh, yeah. that they've been doing, like, I've been seeing a lot of these Star Wars. They, uh, like, now they, they just did, um, they're redoing Leia again for, like, the third or fourth time. But, <laughs> honestly, she's, like, probably the best-looking Leia that they've done in recent years because of the photo technology. Like, she looks spot on. Pretty like her. I mean, even if you go look up the uh, my, I just want to. I'm not into the MCU uh, Marvel Legends line, yeah, but I wanted to go pick up the Scarlet Witch because it really looks like Elizabeth Olsen. So like, it, I, mean, I mean, they do just, a pretty good job. Yeah, and obviously that's not to take away from like ha hand done stuff because they do really great as well. And I, you know, it's, there's nothing the quite eyes, like you know, it. It's yeah, just differences. It's, I mean, it, yeah, and definitely. once again, the problem with hand done is it varies in quality from person to person, person, person to company, yeah, to company. Yeah. uh yeah. whereas that kind of photo technology for the most part is kind of standardized right like it's not as much like obviously someone still has to be behind the keys and jiggling the knobs yeah. and yeah. stuff but it's a program right like it's it's designed to do what it's doing which is to take a face and put it into a figure uh i don't know man like it's just a really good time to be a collector it's a good time to be like honestly it's a good time to be a fan of anything yeah definitely like definitely. Any, anything is like things are coming out there's great stuff gi joe's coming back again too the movie oh, yeah. gi joe snake eyes yeah is coming that back. was interesting and then they did I they've was, already I been doing some comic stuff with it too i think yeah like yeah definitely and guys and i uh, mean there's even the gi joe fortnite stuff going on there yeah for a that bit. i mean fortnite just does it with everybody they're just kind of like yeah, yeah i mean they're just big whores um uh, but that's <laughs> fine uh i don't give a sh like, I'm not, like, saying they shouldn't be. I just find it funny because it's, like, literally anyone who has the money is just yeah. like, throw money at us. We'll put a skin on Fortnite and you can make a comic book. Yeah. We'll do a whole event, we'll a whole event around it. <laughs> oh, oh, man, that's so funny. But, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of great stuff. I feel like we're kind of past, cross fingers, we're, uh, we're pretty much kind of past that COVID drought. Where yeah, we're getting I regular hope, uh, content hope, yeah. and, you know, with all the vaccine stuff, which we won't go into because that's not our area okay. uh, but, but talking about the ramifications of it meaning that more comic stores can be open more movies places can be open more right like we can go out again and do things and like kind of make our craft and enjoy the crafts that are made for us and yeah. it, it's just an exciting time uh we we got i mean we keep getting title drops of like obviously we had the whole mcu phase whatever uh, drop yeah. however long ago, but even DC has been dropping new titles. Uh, definitely, definitely, yeah. They uh, hopefully, uh, I feel like DC hopefully has got their, their stuff together. together. I don't know. There yeah. still seems to be so much drama just with the Snyder stuff, and like, and you on, uh, and I mean, uh, you can never believe rumors, right? Like, there are rumors of a Gambit movie, so I never believe anything I hear in pellets and fine print. Channing, I mean, yeah, that was, I, I really did, I mean, Channing Tatum did do the whole voice, and I was like, oh, okay, I could see this happening, I, but, I was honestly yeah, okay sucked. with it, like, a, a couple people I told about it, they were like, man, and I was like, I'm honestly alright with Channing Tatum as Gambit as long I as mean, he plays, when it's he all did, about uh, how you act. You know, when it was, you know, what really made me feel like he could do it was when, have you seen The Hateful Eight? With uh, Sammy, it's a uh, oh, no. oh, you should check that out. It's a really good movie. It's a Quentin Tarantino movie. Like, I've heard it's has pretty really good. good scenery. The funnier um, part just, is yeah. I've seen the Adam Sandler spoof of that movie, but not that movie. <laughs> check it out, yeah, check it out sometime. But yeah, he's in there, Channing Tatum, and he does like a kind of French Louisiana kind of accent, a Cajun accent in there. Okay. And um, I was like, okay, I guess I could see this this working out as him. Maybe I, maybe that was his, his kind of test role to see if he could. <laughs> Dude, yeah. that, but... like I said, who knows? Maybe in the future, but especially with the X Men coming back to the MCU, uh, yeah. as we're kind of basically confirmed at this point, and we already know Fantastic Four is getting a movie. I still think they should well, wait it a bit, but there is those rumors too. Have you heard now about the uh, Sony and Disney now kind of making another deal to kind of do a more open universe Spider Man? Is what I've been hearing. Kind of I, in the background. I mean, I haven't yet, but. I kind of put it along those kind of rumors of like AT and T giving Zack Snyder his whole own series runs on HBO. Totally possible. 
but as of yet, as far as I know, yeah. been substantiated. Well, he, he was saying he was like they're they're done with him basically. That's what he kept saying. W was like they don't want to do nothing with him with his work. So, and uh, that sucks. I mean, he's got some he's got some cool ideas. You know, I thing, did like Zack Snyder uh, does um, good. Yeah, I heard Army of the Dead was great. Like I I still haven't good. checked it out. Uh, my father says it's amazing, and me and him usually share a pretty good taste. So I don't I don't want to you know ruin anything, but just ask your dad. Did he notice any of like the zombies looking different? That's all. Just ask. Just ask. Yeah, him I'll I'll talk. I'll ask him about it. Um, but yeah, and, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Zack Snyder is not a bad director, right? Like Zack, Zack Snyder is a good director on the right titles. Uh, for instance, right, Three Hundred and Watchmen are some of my favorite dark oh. gritty movies Something out there. Actually. They've got pretty good cinematography. They've got really good, once again, theming, which is fun and cool. And when you put it on top of a well-told story and an executed movie, are great. And, yeah. But I don't think certain characters are all for him. So, for example, I think Zack Snyder would have done fine on a pure Batman movie. I still think he oh, made Batman yeah. a little too dark. But, once are again, you it's Superman? kind of taste. Uh, Superman, he made way too dark. That was uh, he, yeah, The Superman, problem was yeah. he ca- he basically compromised the base character of Superman, in my opinion. And a lot of people are like, well, it's supposed to be about this whole journey to him becoming the Blue Boy Scout. And I was like, cool, but that's not the original Superman. The original Superman is a Blue Boy Scout because of Ma and Pa Kent. Mom and, yeah, Mom yes, and Dad. That is yeah. the whole premise of him being human and being right. His powers do not teach him to be human his parents I would have loved that they would have done the um have you have you ever read um Mark Wolfman's uh little one shot of the uh like his up and coming Superman story he did a few years uh, back it was only like two years What was the title of it? Remember, remember but look it up it's a yeah, Superman book done by Mark Wolfman it was I, done I, just I mean, a few years I read, ago I read most of them not most I mean it was about good. it was good, good. I liked it just because yeah and i don't really like care for superman and i really enjoyed that superman but because it was an up-and-coming story of him becoming superman so they in his you know mom and dad send him off to the city and Is at the first you know he's just ready. it's almost like a year one run but it's it's his own little story okay. mark Wolf right. did um but it's uh yeah he goes to the city you know tries to be a superhero and it's really cool you know because he for him being superman he's scared <laughs> so it's it's really interesting to see that side of him because he's he he, uh, as soon as he gets to the city, he hears like gunshots and ambulance and this and that. Kids are gonna get hit by a car, that, and, and it just terrifies him, you know, because there's just so much going on, and he just doesn't know if he can handle this or be the hero well, that the people and it's, want to be. It's one of those things that's tough because Superman is, and I'll say this as a Marvel fan, like Superman is easily the definition of what a superhero is. No, there's yeah. no question. And the reason has always been not that he is this ultra-powerful, unstoppable force, which is cool, and that does make him super heroic, blah, 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 blah. But Superman has always been the best hero because he is the big blue Boy Scout. Because at the end of the day, Superman is not Kryptonian. He's human, right? Or he's earthbound whatever you want to call it even though he is biologically kryptonian he is at heart a human person who has human problems right superman's not perfect superman does kill sometimes superman does snap sometimes right like Uh superman makes mistakes even though he is so powerful and those are the contrasts that are supposed to bring into light right what being a human being means uh I can't remember which one it was. It's one of the Dark Knight ones, I think, from uh, you know, you know the runs. Uh, I can't remember if it's two or three, but something happens to Batman. And he's like having a heart attack, right? Like he's having a heart attack and dying, and they're old or whatever. And Superman is flying with him in his arms, and it's very compelling because he's not like, oh, this, and he's like, I'm faster than a speeding bullet, but I'm not fast enough. And it's the contrast of having all this power but still being prone to human flaws right and vulnerable to human things you know bullets might not hurt him but you know uh lois lane doing something could hurt him or right like jimmy being hurt could hurt him because at the core of his being he's just a person so it's always interesting and tough to write superman because one he's too strong right like can't write a, a reasonable threat for superman 
without go- coming up with some bullshit. Mm-hmm. But two, his powers aren't what makes him the the great Reed, right? Like that's cool and all, and it's great to see amazing feats of strength when he does them, or speed, or ice breath, or all the other bullshit powers. But the great moments are when Superman is being that like beacon of hope and like uh, greatness. There's a couple really good ones. I can't remember another. Uh, I can't remember the exact run, but I know another one was just a straight like chapter in a run where he's like trying to save a woman from a speeding bullet, but he's not fast enough, right? He was too far away and he's not going to be able to get to her in time. Uh, but she mo- she had started moving her head, right? Like she was trying to get out of the way. And so it buys him a couple extra picoseconds or however long to get there and get her out of the way. And once again, it's not about Superman, right? Like saving the day. Cause obviously he still saves the day. But it's about the fact that human beings fighting and uh, struggling with themselves are what help him save the day and are what make the difference at the end right. of the day. I don't know. It's weird stuff. I, I wish no, I could remember no, the no. chapter because because no, those no. are yeah those are the ones. Understandable. Well, yeah. Well, like I said, hopefully we'll see what DC does in the next you know few years here. I mean they they just announced their Aquaman two title. Um, I, I know they're supposed to be planning a Static Shock uh, movie uh, or show sense. for HBO I, Max. I, I which it's a sh- I don't remember. I can't. Yeah, I remember. But that one, I'll be definitely excited for to check out. Um, I can't wait to actually read their um, their because they're bringing back Milestone for DC um, and Static Shock. I think is this weekend or this week uh, Wednesday coming up will be its first issue. And then they got a couple other Milestone characters coming uh, back as well too. So I actually added those to my pool too as well to check them out. Uh, awesome. But yeah, definitely checking out the static uh, static shock. Uh, I know I don't know if I told you, but they kind of changed the origin story for him a little bit. Really? Um, yeah. So you know how it was back in the before it was like a gang war, and it was like he was they were kind of you know gone to this gas attack. Well, in this one, I think they said that he was in a Black uh, Lives Matter protest. I think it was a, a Black Lives Matter a protest of some sort, you know, for anything. But any uh, the protesters got caught in the gas here and so some people died and i guess some people you know ended up coming with these powers instead um so yeah changed a little bit of his origin story okay. instead of being gang bangers it was protesters <laughs> i mean uh, I, 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 yeah yeah we'll see i mean i know some people were hating on it you know because they don't like that kind of stuff politics in their books but Nobody, hey i mean nobody likes fine. politics except for all heroes or politics whatever I'm not going to get into that discussion again because we've had it so many times on the fact that exactly. just being a superhero is a political statement. So, I mean, I'm definitely going to be excited to check that. I've always been a Static uh, I, I, li- I like Static. I'm not, like, super... Uh, I mean, my biggest, like, drawn was always, like, the show, you know what I mean, as a kid. And I've read some of the comics, but I don't know a lot about his origin. Exactly. I was more of the loving the show and yes. all yeah, that. Which is, then... that's, fine. that's a fine way. Like People are always down on people for not reading the comics, but there's nothing wrong with loving a character and what mm-hmm. from, you know about a character coming from the show. What is wrong is telling other people they're wrong about something because you only watched the show. <laughs> that's what's wrong. But there's nothing wrong with being like, you know... Uh, exactly. You know, I like Static Shock because of this, and I don't read the comics. Uh, having said that, I really would like to. I think the only reason I could see myself not to, to see myself caring about changing his origin story is if it changes his like character motivations. I guess, like if okay. him being in the gang banging thing was like a big part of his character or story but otherwise i just don't see it being an issue it's no different yeah. than changing I, it's it's way less different than even changing the whole iron man uh hank pym thing with ultron you yeah know what I mean? exactly there, we yeah, make, yeah we make changes in these shows like that's the whole point of doing a new thing right like if you were just going to make the exact animated version of it then you'd call it the same name animated right like uh, oh, yeah. best examples are like some of the DC ones, which are still great and no, no harping on them, but the animated versions are essentially the exact same as the comics. And that's why they're called justice league animated, right. Or, yeah. you know, or whatever. And they, they basically share the same title with their source material, which I, I think is a good idea. And, but these aren't yeah. that right. Like infinity war is not the same as the infinity war in the comics. It's mm-hmm. it, there is no 
I'm Thor. I mean, there is a Thor Ragnarok story run, but there's not to my remembrance a Thor Ragnarok titled comic. Uh, it's just stuff like that, and so like I I just don't feel like that's unless it changes the character right in huge ways and huge character motivations or something. I don't feel like that's a good reason to like not like a piece of material because it's different from its source material that just because it's different doesn't mean it's bad yeah no exactly yeah so actually i'll check it out wednesday and it's on my pull list so um yeah. i'm definitely yeah. reading it and check it out um i only read so many dc titles and that will be one of them now <laughs> um I, uh, man i have not re- i don't think i've read a dc title seriously since the middle of dark knight metal or well i just started bit. reading uh i started reading the harley quinn one because they just rebooted that and then i started okay. joker because they just did the joker series now i did um, read some of that one uh i'll, I'll I read got... some of the black label and like specific ones but that's yeah. all usually i read too it's just black label stuff too um well there was something else that was black label that... oh i was reading uh check it out too it's called nice house on the lake i think is what it's called it's but james tinney and the guy who's doing batman who's done something killing the children and who does the department of truth book which are all very very almost all hot books something to kill the children is just like non-stop like Has and batman department of truth. Ha- hot uh, uh like well, a little bit a little bit when i know kinda... the other two are doing really good and are great stories i just didn't is know he, if this batman he was, was doing, doing that great. whole remember joker war with the punchline and all that people were kind of getting hyped for that kind of stuff okay uh, it's kind of sizzled out sen- uh since then though oh i guess not because he just came out with another character did you know the other one miracle molly is his other character he just came out with I uh, hadn't uh, even last heard month about him. Yeah, she just came out last month. So he he's just rolling out new characters left to right yeah. here. Hopefully it um, goes well. Which is fine. I mean, yeah, I, I, it's always I mean, rough I heard you liked like, his uh, the Clown Hunter character. Clown Hunter is really good. Once again, I, I my, my thing is, once again, the problem with... It's kind of the Bendis problem of yeah. characters versus the stories they're in. I think... Um, who else is like that? There's another character that I can't get out of the top of my head who's like that... Uh, and then there are characters like that are the opposite. But uh, characters like that that are like cool ideas or designs are oftentimes like wasted in my opinion. Like in even like Punchline for me, like I like Punchline's design and the idea of her character. But I felt like her introduction for me wasn't the uh, wasn't the strongest like inclination to grab onto her story and once again that's just a personal thing yeah uh and the same can be said for like a lot of like random character i mean thinking of all the random new marvel characters that have come out in the last two years that nobody can yeah, name and yeah. sword master arrow uh star reptile reptile well i guess he's been around for a while and I yeah know he actually was around. in the no <laughs> i i read that in one of the King and Black Titans actually that he was in the Avengers Academy, which I do yeah, not remember so I was at like, all. Oh, I was like, oh, he's been I around he for was, a while. Yeah, I thought he was new too. But that, but there are other ones. Um, another good example from a DC character, and I don't remember if you were even read that storyline, but was from the whole Perpetua versus the Blackest Night thing, where they brought in. Oh the, no, I didn't okay. read that. No. Well, they brought in this really cool looking character that basically kind of looked like uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider. <laughs> <laughs> And he was cool. His concept was really cool and everything, but I feel like he just didn't get used in any meaningful way. Like, he was the kind of character that showed up, did, like, two or three big, crazy power feats, and then just fucked off. Uh, see, that's kind of like I feel like with Noel, what's going to happen with Noel. Like, after this whole thing's done with his stuff, uh, like, what, I'm, I mean... I'm not going to lie. I really like Donny Cates, and it's rare rare that I get a swing and a miss from him. And for me, the, the King in Black has just been kind of a swing and a miss. It was fine and it was cool, but honestly, Absolute Carnage was better than King in Black, in my opinion. Uh, but that's just yeah. me. Because, like, I yeah. love... And, and it's weird because, like, I'm really enjoying the stuff he's doing with Thor... Uh, well, did you hear he's going with Hulk now, right? That uh, oh, is he getting the on Owing, to the immortal? Yeah, Al- Owing is about to be. Oh, and you know what's funny? They're switching. So Al's going to Venom, <laughs> and Donnie's going. To- <laughs> they're doing. They're both doing great work. So like, and that's the other thing. Even the Venom storyline, like the actual Venom main comic down. line, is doing 
you know, pre- was doing yeah. pretty good as compared to King. Of, I I don't know. I I felt like King and Black once again kind of did that thing where Noel shows up and he Noel. does this like really it's big like, feat, and then yeah. suddenly, uh, you know, and he's unbeatable. He's killed Celestials. He rips the Sentry in half. And then it's just like, well, just we're like, just gonna get some likes, random. He likes to kill characters a lot. That's for sure. That's what one person said. I read in a comment the other day. He's like, oh, so who's he gonna kill in the Hulk now? <laughs> and mean, then just bring. He was doing all right, I guess. I don't know. I feel like it's rough for me because like nobody really in comics kills characters. You know what I mean? Like they're gone for a yeah. year or two, and then they're back, and it's there's nobody cares. Uh, yeah. But even beyond that, like. The deaths that they choose to do are not, like, imp- usually very important deaths. Like, I guess the Sentry was one of the biggest ones, but he'd been a thorn yeah. in the side of Marvel for, like, years. So Yeah. They've been they brought struggling him back anyways, because to... uh, you, you read the, no, they, uh, the Valkyrie yeah. Ryan, right? Yeah, and, I mean, they were never going to get rid of him, rid of him. Oh, and then I guess Thunderbolts kind of brought him back, too, because they brought his halves together. <laughs> did you read Thunderbolts yet? Yeah, I did read Thunderbolts. I just finished, which was, was an interesting was one. <laughs> it was just a suicide, which Thunderbolts is just a suicide squad. Suicide, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, what I did like, though, is in this run, they cop to it. They were like, we're not going to. Yeah, because like, yeah, he said we're a over suicide, suicide team. Like, <laughs> they, like, they, oh, okay. a bunch a bunch of it they were they, they did a bunch of them scattered throughout yeah. the three chapters where they were just totally yeah. nodding to the fact that yes this is absolutely a suicide squad ripoff and there's once again nothing wrong i, I guess rip off you shouldn't do but there's nothing wrong with taking inspiration from other characters that's how you get characters like deadpool and uh you know uh that's how superman is able to fly cuz i mean yeah deadpool was yeah not popular until i think who was it that i think it was um gary dugan picked him up and then yeah. he started kind of getting popular after that cuz he had been around for a while as kind of this rip off yeah. but as soon as he changed into his own kind of character with his own set of stuff he basically surpassed the original and maybe not in power but in popularity and sales no question yeah, there, there is no Deathstroke movie, uh, yet. So, <laughs> yet. Yeah, they, they, the future's um. open, man. Um, <laughs> but it, it's just one of those examples, once again, of where, or once again, Aquaman. There's no Namor movie, so no. you know. I feel like uh, they're really trying to push to, towards him though, because like you know they've been doing a lot of Namor stuff with the uh, Avenger stuff, and then um, I heard that there was rumors that he's supposed to be in the Black Panther uh, two uh, yep. movie as yep. well so i don't know if they're pushing towards this character more now i i really always there's only two places you can really introduce name more and that's black panther a uh, three technically if you really wanted to get kind of antsy about it but black panther fantastic four maybe x-men otherwise namor just doesn't do anything with anybody else so, like he's kind of a side character he's right? Just a, like, he's just the jerk that comes out and says hey what are you doing the mouse he he is the villain or helping and uh, anti-hero that you need at any yeah giving exactly story. If, it, if it doesn't benefit him he's not out <laughs> oh, once again and even to the price once again as a writer's block thing he's great because if you want namor to be a villain boom just add some yeah. shitty little motivation and there he is if you want him to be a hero or anti-hero boom set him on that side and the same is kind of true of the hulk right like if you want the hulk to be a villain just change things up slightly he's a villain if you want thinking to be a hero change things up slightly he's a hero again uh and that's not to like like say the hulk is a villain just saying that's how writers use the hulk right the hulk is either an antagonist or a protagonist depending on what they need for that particular story right a uh, good example is age of ultron you know what I mean? We need the we need the reason to keep all the Avengers distracted while Ultron's building his body. Well, I'll just make the Hulk fight Iron Man. It's it's, it's a good one, right? There's nothing right. wrong with it. It's just that's how they use those characters. Uh, I don't know. I'm excited though. I mean, once again, hearing that Donny Cates is going on to the Hulk is going to be really interesting. I want to know what he's going to, because Donny Cates is really good about not changing things but uh i guess not changing but not retconning but changing things in a way that the retcon moves into it you know what i mean like uh and i thought the hulk did pretty good with that kind of with the kind of gamma magic energy 
just in the sense that there were all these kind of weird kind of non sciencey things that went on with the hulk already yeah and uh the symbiote stuff right with donny cates and actually who did do the original guardians of the galaxy change to the Sim clintar backstory that was um i can't even remember but, um but once again donny donny did basically the same thing with Noel, right he didn't change the symbiotes in any meaningful real way right like the symbiotes were essentially all still the same their their history for the most part remained the same the difference turned out to be right motivations or details that, that you either didn't know or were slightly changed you know what right. I mean? instead of like oh they all come from whatever planet blah 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 and obviously tying that in with thor was really cool because it makes that whole kind of interconnected web of marvel feel that much bigger uh-huh which it was also cool to re-see some necro sword work in the uh, king in black you know what i mean but right. uh i don't know it, it, it's interesting for me because once again, I'm still parsing out some of the side details from the side stories to see how it all pulled together. But it, it felt right. to me like he was a really big threat that kind of just got pushed over for the sake of story without any real, like, the the effort and energy I usually expect of from Donny Cates to finish it off. Right. 